An ambitious attempt to reshape behavior en masse requires messaging and information to transform public perception that a certain phenomenon threatens societal well-being. The bid to prepare society to accept the austerity precipitating communist totalitarianism, or the Great Reset, is presently being carried out in the form of a frightening pandemic, one that has achieved its validation by way of dubious public health measures and a subservient news media. State government officials and corporate media have together used the manufactured crisis as a means to accelerate their plans for such a socioeconomic transition. While attempting to coordinate the removal of the sitting president from office via an apparently rigged election. Among the key information and propaganda engines being used to condition the public toward compliance is an organization indirectly subsidized by Laureen Powell Jobs, progressive left widow of Apple founder Steve Jobs and heiress to the $16 billion Apple computer fortune. We examine what is called the COVID Tracking Project on this episode of Memory Hole Blog Report. This is MHB Report. I'm James Tracy. You may have already heard of the COVID Tracking Project, likely because the information it's published is picked up by close to every major news media outlet in America and beyond. You know, this uh, this group, the COVID Tracking Project, as you mentioned, they started in March and um, are used by all sorts of organizations, including some that you would think would have you know data of their own to rely upon. Over the past several weeks, such information has convinced a large portion of the U.S. public that a menacing resurgence in coronavirus cases is taking place. The CTP is the self-appointed entity collecting and publishing daily COVID-19 statistics from across the U.S. It then feeds them to major news media outlets, universities, and other interested parties. Importantly, the data, which has the veneer of hard scientific evidence, is being used as the basis to justify a new wave of draconian lockdown measures throughout America. The CTP is housed at the Atlantic Magazine, a once august journal of opinion and analysis that, following the election of Donald Trump, has rapidly mutated into a far-left, extreme anti-Trump, Green New Deal cheerleading organ. The magazine recently drew fire in the lead-up to the 2020 presidential election by publishing unsubstantiated claims that President Trump called veterans, quote, losers and suckers, unquote. In 2017, the nonprofit Emerson Collective, overseen and operated by Laureen Powell Jobs, purchased controlling interest in the Atlantic. The COVID tracking project was begun in early 2020, following the World Health Organization's announcement of a global pandemic. It charged itself with collecting and publishing all available public health information concerning diagnoses, treatments, hospitalizations, and deaths where COVID-19 was a factor. Upon its establishment, one would think the COVID tracking project might employ a number of qualified epidemiologists and immunologists to proceed with such an ambitious venture. Yet, according to its own website, only a handful of such experts are listed in far-removed advisory roles. The COVID tracking project is instead overseen by a Jeff Hammerbacher and Adam Colum, both of whose primary expertise lies in finance, specifically biotech entrepreneurial activities, and some of their investment projects would likely profit substantially from the same acute public health crisis the COVID tracking project's activities and data are helping to fuel. 
The fact that they have charged themselves with collecting and funneling such data to major news organizations alongside their entrepreneurial activities might be understood as a severe breach of journalistic integrity. Yet the Atlantic and its billionaire overseer apparently see no conflict of interest in this arrangement. Along these lines, the unusually young group of individuals involved in day-to-day -day coronavirus statistics collection, which includes the Atlantic's far-left editors, staff writers, and an array of part-time volunteers, readily admit to little, if any, formal public health or data analysis expertise. Um, for me, here is uh, the Oregon coast on the edge of the woods, where I am working on a huge public health data project that I never expected to be on. And one of the things that's really clear, like my background, um, I mean, I was like an English guy and a writer, but I spent a lot of time around Berkeley and other institutions as a visiting scholar, largely in their kind of science and technology studies departments. Um, I'm a data journalist. I most recently worked at NBC News, mostly covering political stuff, so election results and campaign finance. But Despite this lack of expertise, these figures comprise the engine that assembles and churns out the uncertain and often misleading statistics being used to scientifically validate the new wave of severe lockdowns and related behavior restrictions that will only serve to further cripple the U.S. economy and ruin millions more lives. True journalism would not concern itself with uncritically collecting and promoting information based on flawed and what are provably fraudulent testing methods and tortured medical record keeping. Real journalists would instead be interrogating and exposing this type of genuine malfeasance, one that lies at the core of the entire COVID-19 scheme, which is, after all, an integral part of bringing Western civilization to its knees before introducing an entirely new socioeconomic system. If you appreciate these video explorations, please consider becoming a patron of Memory Hole blog at patreon slash memory hole. For MHB Report, this is James Tracy.